guys, this video is all about the document required to apply for the Turkish scholarship. Instead of me listing them out to you just like it is on the Turkey Evo Slayer website, I thought I should rather focus on giving you more important details that I believe would answer some of your questions regarding the document. So I suggest to watch the entire video so you don't miss out on any important detail. By the way, if you are new here, you are very much welcome to my channel. I am Bowser Zakaria and I make videos basically on studying abroad. If you would like to see more of this, please click the subscribe button down there and don't forget to ring the bell so you get notified every time I upload. Okay, let's get into the video. Now, let's start from here. According to the Turkey Boslari website, all applicants must have the following documents. 1. A recent photograph. 2. A form of identification. 3. Diplomas. 4. Transcript. 5. National exam scores. 6. International exam scores. 7. Proof of language proficiency if your university would be requiring it. Now, let's get into details of each and every one of these documents so that we can get some more information about them. I'll start with the photograph. This has to be recent and very clear. It should be portrait, of course, so I suggest you get it done by a professional instead of taking it yourself. And when you want to upload it, please upload it in JPG or PDF format. Then for identification, your passport or national identity card must be valid. If it will expire soon, you should start thinking of renewing it. Also, when taking pictures of this document, please make sure there are no shadows and make sure they are very clear and readable. I suggest you get it scanned so that um, it is free of any irregularities in the document. Now let's move on to diplomas. For undergraduates, your diploma is your secondary school graduation certificate, that is your testimonial. Um, for masters, your diploma is your bachelor certificate and for PhD students, your diploma is your master's certificate. Now next up is transcript. Transcripts are documents that show all your grades or scores achieved. For undergraduate applicants, your transcript should include at least the last three years of secondary school. If you have transcript that show the entire six years, that's better. For masters, your transcript will be your undergraduate transcript, and for PhD applicants, your transcript will be your master's transcript, or you can also include the um, undergraduate transcript. Now, a very important point about transcripts is that they must be official. And how do you make them official? Is by having the stamp on it. If you are downloading your transcript from a school's website, I suggest you take it to your school to get the stamp and make sure it has the school's logo boldly written on it. Because if you submit an unofficial transcript, it may undermine your application and I'm sure you guys don't want that. Lastly, don't forget to take clear pictures of it and upload in JPG or PDF formats. Moving on to national exams. This part is basically for undergraduate applicants and what you upload here is your work certificate. Um, there is no national exam conducted for masters and PhD students. So what you can upload in this case is your um, international exam or any certificate you have. For example, GMAT, GRE, ETC. For undergraduate applicants, you can also upload international exams like SAT. In fact, if you have high scores, it may really boost your application. The next one I'll talk about is letter of recommendation. This is one very important document that most people don't take seriously. Guys, you indeed need a good teacher or lecturer that knows you well to write you a letter of recommendation because you'll definitely do a good job. But you should also mind who you choose because not all teachers or lecturers know how to write um, a letter of recommendation. There are methods to writing it and if it is well written, it can definitely help your application. And lastly, we have English proficiency test. This is just a test that shows how good you are in the English language. Like I said in my previous video, you are allowed to choose up to 12 universities you would like to apply to when applying for the Turkish scholarship. So I'm sure some of you must have started checking which universities you like to apply to. While checking, also check the requirements as well for English proficiency. If your university, I mean the university you want to apply to, would require you to submit an English proficiency test, then it's a very good idea to upload one when applying for the Turkish scholarship. However, if the time is so short or for one reason or the other you can't um, upload any certificate to prove your English proficiency, there's no problem at all because um, I was also like that. I applied without... Um, submitting any form of English proficiency. But what I did was that after completing my Tumeric course, that is my Turkish language course, before I rolled into my department, I had to take an English test that was administered by the school. So you can also do that, and if your school has its own English test, it will definitely administer it to you before you enroll into your department, if your department will be in English. So um, this is a two-way thing. If you can upload it, if you have the test and you can upload it, is good for you if not don't worry when you are done with your language course 
you simply write another test organized by the school if your department will be in english so that brings us to the end of today's episode i hope you guys gained one or two things regarding the document i would like to let you guys know that if you want to apply for the top tables scholarship you should have started by now you should start your processes by now start getting your documents ready you know since you know what it entails please get into action and start making preparations because no time no time at all before you know it the time just catches up with you and um, you won't have time to complete what you want to do and lastly um, please keep yourself updated i make videos like this or people like me make videos like this just to help people to give information where necessary but you also need to keep yourself updated with information you also need to always check online maybe they've made any changes to their website i'll leave the, the link in the description below and just make sure you are on par because um it's really not easy i hope you guys have a good one and i really wish you good luck if you have not subscribed to my channel please don't forget to do that bye see you in the next one